So I come to you guys for a challenge for an FM23 rebuild, and the results were quite convincing. You guys wanted to see a PSG rebuild with no Mbappe, no Neymar, and obviously no Messi. And one other challenge also, we can only sign French players. So let's get into this PSG rebuild and see how long it takes to win absolutely everything. Now, I know PSG are a very good side. I am aware of that. But if you look at this, it's going to be a very fun video because pretty much all of their start on 11 is not French. So from this start on 11, eventually we want to get rid of Donnarumma, Hakimi, Marquinhos, um, Ugarte, obviously the new man, Fabian, Verratti, Soler, obviously this lad as well, and Akadi. So pretty much their best 11 filtered by the game we can't use. So it's going to be quite a fun rebuild. Obviously, the first player that we are going to wave goodbye to is going to be Lionel Messi, which obviously has happened in real life. He goes to into Miami on the free. And what a sign that is for them, by the way. We actually do manage to sell Kylian Mbappe on this game to Real Madrid. Most likely the club where Mbappe will go to in the future in real life. £120 million, a massive loss, but it's part of the challenge. Now, it's not that nobody wanted Neymar. It's that nobody could afford Neymar in terms of the value and also the wage that he's on. So I simply released him purely for the fact of it's the challenge. And let's face it, PSG have got enough money. We also sell Paredes, who goes to Chelsea. Quite a good sign for Chelsea, to be fair. £19 million to be exact for quite an average midfielder. But of course, being PSG, we have got money to spend. And the first lad we're going to bring in is going to be Camavinga, probably one of the best French talents in midfield and also quite quite easy to sign an FM. For some reason, Real Madrid are quite easy to sell this player, and he is an absolute baller. He can play in several areas of midfield, a very pre-built player, but still has tons of potential. Up next is going to be Matis Tell, obviously from Bayern Munich, 23 and a half million pounds. At the moment, he might not look the best, although to be fair, he's got good acceleration, good pace, good finishing, and still got a four-star potential to grow at the age of 18. And lastly, it's a little bit of an out there signing, but I needed someone that's already world-class to replace Mbappe on that left wing. He cost me £85 million. That is going to be Kingsley Coman from Bayern Munich. Obviously, three and a half star ability, four star basically. He offers something which not too many do in the sense of rapid, rapid stats. I mean, 19 acceleration, 17 agility, 17 pace, really good finishing as well. And if that's not enough for you, also really good on the ball, slightly on the older side, but still it's going to be a world-class player to replace Mbappe on that left-hand side. And now the team looks something like this. We are going to be using the Lewis and Riquet's tactic that I made, by the way, and it is a really fun tactic to use, so be sure to check that out as well. But what I will say is this team now is going to look a lot different. To be fair, we've got sort of two players in there. So we are going to have Kamavinga, Komen, Akadi's up there. But I am actually going to make sure that Matty's tail does get some game time because I do believe he can develop really well in this French league. And do you know what? Kingsley Komen is a player that one day maybe I could even see making that leap. He's a very similar sort of vibe to Ousmane Dembele, who, by the way, we are going to try out and go and get if we can afford him. But his price tag is looking a little bit mental at the moment. But let's get into that first season and see exactly what we can do with the first attempt to turn this team fully French. So in terms of the actual French league, guys, we had a very good season, to be fair. We absolutely dominated it. Obviously, played 34. We won 28, drew 4, lost 2, one being against Marseille, who beat us 4-1. That is quite a convincing game for them, but obviously we were very dominating in the league, so didn't really matter too much. In terms of goal scorers, it is unfortunately going to be Akadi, who is going to be leaving us as soon as we can get rid of him. Coming in with 26 goals, we've got Soler and also Mendes coming in with the highest average match rate in joint second and third place. We're going to have Vitinha coming in with assists, obviously another fantastic player who, by the way, I'm a really big fan of, but we simply can't keep him because he is Portuguese. And obviously, we're trying to just have purely French players. Um, in terms of players of the match, Akadi coming in again, Donnarumma with the most clean sheets. Yeah, there's a lot of players that are performing well, but unfortunately, we can't keep. We also did win the Friendly Cup final. Nothing too serious, but I guess it's a trophy. The Champions League proved to be a real test for us, as it does in real life. I mean, PSG never really do that exceptional in the Champions League, as Man City absolutely dismantle us. We did, however, win the Coupe de France and a 1-0 win over Marseille, so that's something. And to finish off a quadruple winning season, that is going to be the Trophy de Champion against Toulouse. Can you call it a quadruple season? Can you include a Friendly Cup? If not, it's a treble winning season anyway. Still a fantastic season. Matisse Tell didn't actually have a bad season either, to be fair. His first season at PSG, obviously playing 26 games, 25 goals and four assists. Not too bad from him. A little bit worried about Kingsley Coman as he actually played 30 appearances, obviously He's contributed four goals and seven assists. I'm a little bit worried about that because I do expect more from him. I know he did get injured at some point in the season, but 
still a little bit worrying for that price tag. In terms of Kamavinga, he had quite an average season, a 7.2 average match rating. I'm not expecting loads of goals and assists from him though, because he's not playing in a role to do so. But just as long as he's being average, he's still putting in a shift, working hard. That's all that matters. But going into this second transfer window, guys, obviously with a lot to do, we have got 142 million pounds to spend. So a lot of money to play with, also a lot of players to offload. So this transfer budget, I wouldn't be surprised if it turns to 200. So the first player we're going to wave goodbye to in this second transfer window is going to be sharing the door who goes to Manchester City for £9 million. Kazawa, although he is French, he is on a rapid decline and he is 31. So the end of the day, not really going to have a future at the club anymore. He goes to Schalke on the free. Sergio Rico also goes on the free to RB Leipzig. Draxler goes to Bayer Leverkusen for £3 million. Not a lot, but it's better than letting him go on the free as well. Abdou Diallo goes to Inter Milan on the free. A lot of players they simply were not signing contracts and they needed to go anyway and luckily being PSG where you've got unlimited money you don't really worry about this stuff too much. Cardi goes to Manchester United for £27 million quite a United signing. So that meant we had quite a bit of money to play with. And obviously you could also use installments and we had an absolute field day. We brought in three sensational players. Let's go through them. The first one is going to be arguably the best centre back in a Premier League at the moment. That is going to be William Salabia. He cost me £101 million, an absolute outrageous price tag i know but it's what you pay for the end of the day he's 23 he's got 17 tackling he's really strong quite quick as well got good jump and reach and scary he can actually carry on growing to a four and a half star potential center back one of the if not the best center backs in the game then pick up moulier and this is a bit of a backup goalkeeper option to start with because i'm not sure exactly what we're going to do with don naruma because he's got a lot on his contract and i'm not letting him go on the free so i brought this guy in hopefully he can play some cup games but he is a very solid backup and of course he is french and we finally land our man the man that has been linked with psg in real life he did cost us a lot of money, a hundred million pounds. Now, I wouldn't pay this in real life, don't get me wrong, but I wanted to bring him in purely for realism because he's been linked with PSG a lot. In the game, he's actually really good. Very similar to Kingsley Coman. Very quick on the ball. He's got decent finishing. Dribbling is nearly a bang on 20. So he might be actually worth this price tag in the game. 27 years of age, so he's not exactly young, young, but still can grow to a four-star potential ability. Wage-wise, though, 500 grand a week. What is it with these and PSG players wanting high money? But now the team looks a little bit like this going into the second season. We're going to have Donnarumma, Hakimi, Salabia, Kimbembe, Mendes, Yagate, Kamavinga, Verratti, Komen, Dembele, Antel. So we are slowly introduce some more and more French players. Now, by the end of this, the max I'm going to allow myself is three non-French players in the team. I want everyone to be French if I can. But realistically, this is looking a lot better now. We're going down that French route. We're getting a lot more players on, even on the bench now. You can see we've got some French players, still some players need to offload that aren't French. And to be honest, we're looking quite strong as well. So let's go into this second season and see if we can maintain winning the league at minimum, but hopefully at least win a couple of trophies. So the second season has been simulated, guys and it was even more dominant than before. We won the league by an absolute... Well, I mean, there's no even competition. I don't know how to describe it. 91 points, Leon coming in with only 67. We won 29, drew four and lost one, which is against Leon. That seems to be a pattern. We're only losing against a second place team, but a very convincing season. It's going to be this lad here, Tell coming in with 26 goals, ranking him one out of everyone in the league. That is exactly what we want to be seeing. We've got Verratti, Komen and Tell coming in with the highest match rating. Two of those three we can actually keep. So that's a positive to see as well. In terms of players of the match, Tell's going to pick up six. Most clean sheets is going to be Donnarumma as well. But this is a real positive sign because a lot of these players are players we can actually keep and they're thriving. Apparently, we're a team that simply can't get past the semi-finals of the Champions League as we get knocked out against Arsenal in the Champions League, a team which I think we should be able to beat, especially after taking their best centre-back by quite some distance. So that's the only real disappointment of the season. We did win the Coupe de France, so however, it went to extra time against Lens where we did win 3-2, but even that should be more comfortable. Also, the Trophy de Champion, we picked that up as well, and that is going to be a 1-0 win over Marseille, a very comfortable game. We need to talk about this guy that is going to be tell because he is absolutely thriving right now i mean 43 appearances 43 goals four assists he's putting in goals in every competition he's got 11 in the champions league he's got 26 in the french league in the coupe de france he is scoring for fun and still apparently only two and a half star ability if he's scoring 40 goals forget the stars usman dembele as well the second top goal scorer in the season quite an okay sort of introductory season 
playing 46, scoring 17, 15 assists, averaging a 7.36 match rating. Funny enough, he did get injured at one point in the season, so what can you expect? You are signed in a, practically a wheelchair, um, but hopefully he can just carry on offering something because somewhere in there is a really world-class player. Kingsley Coleman, a very similar pattern to the first season. He's doing okay, but still I think he can really explode to that next level. 41 games, 14 goals, 9 assists. Now, I know a lot of the goals are coming from tail, but I just feel that he can offer a little bit more. Him and Dembele, I feel, can easily be 20 goal a season sort of wingers. They're given a license to do so, so I'm hoping for a little bit more from Komen. But going into the third season, guys, we have got 234 million pounds to spend now we are going to be sensible obviously we have only we're still restricted to sign a french players so there's only so many players we can sign if we didn't have a restriction yeah this would be over already let's go over to that third season and try and offload as many as we can so the first player we're going to offload is going to be shrenar obviously a very new player to psg he goes to chelsea for 72 million pounds at the age of 30 so a great bit of business in my opinion a massive loss but He's not French. Also, wave goodbye to Juan Bernat, who goes to Juventus on the free. Not a massive loss. And again, he couldn't be at the club due to the nationality. But I swear this guy's been at PSG for absolutely years. We also wave goodbye to one of my favorite DMs in the game, funny enough. That is going to be Danilo Piera. This guy goes to Lazio on the free. A fantastic midfield player. But again, he's aging a little bit and also doesn't meet the requirements of this challenge. So what a sign of that is for Lazio. And lastly, Lazio are going on a spree as they pick up Vitinha for £20.5 million. They have picked up two very good midfield players. Are they going for the title? Now, we've had a bit of an outrageous transfer window as we have brought in, I believe, to be six players, all of really good quality. And I'm hoping this can really complete that transformation of a whole French team. But let's go over and go through these signings. First up is going to be one for the future. That is going to be Adley coming from Udinese. He cost me £25 million. Already quite good when it comes to attributes, but you are signing this guy for his potential. He's a very good youngster. I say youngster, sort of middle age to sort of young sort of vibe but honestly I've used this guy before and he is an absolute baller. We then pick up Turam for 21 and a half million pounds from Al Nasser and this is a fantastic signing guys. He developed so differently in every single FM save but in this occasion he's a four-star ability with some absolute mammoth like stats in midfield lots of stats in the green he can play everywhere in the midfield he's french he's semi-young it's a perfect signer a bit of a luxury signer now for 78 million pounds that is going to be Teo hernandez he is definitely going to be a first team fullback the main pretty much the main reason i done it he is french he's going to overplace mendez meaning another french player in the team and let's just let's just make this very clear i'm not just bringing him in because of his nationality he is an absolute baller a rapid on the ball great crossing great aggression good tackling he does cost a fair bit of money to have at the club on 375 grand a week but he is one of the best fullbacks money can buy and speaking of some of the best center backs or fullbacks you can buy in this case it is going to be a center back that is going to be upper he comes from Bayern munich he cost me 68 million pounds and he again is one of the best center halves you can buy french as well 26 years of age so a couple of years sort of older than what ideally we want to be sort of aiming for for the future but he is going to give you a very good pre-built center back that has played at some absolute ridiculous clubs obviously by munich leipzig he's been at some really good clubs to be fair to him picked up some really big game experience and i think is going to slot into this team really well then pick up brandon soppy for a backup right back our left back he can play either one which is very handy indeed he cost me seven million pounds is he going to get in the first team not a shot but he is actually fairly decent not as good as the options we do have in that first team but nevertheless a great sign for that fee and lastly, purely to help out Ted a little bit with the goals, that is going to be Rutter. He comes in from Leeds to £42 million. Pounds. I'm a really big fan of this guy. I used him in that Leeds rebuild we done months ago, and he was absolutely incredible. Now, what I do want to say is with this guy, you're getting a complete package. You're getting a player that can grow. He's only 23 years of age. He's French, which is very good for us. 16 acceleration, 16 agility, 16 pace. Great finishing as well. There's really not much he can't do. And also, he can play out on the wing. So technically, we can have a full French team now. We have got Moulier, we've got Soppy, we've got Salabia, we've got Upacano, Hernandez, we've got Emery, we've got Camavinga, we've got Turan, we've got Coman, we've got Dembele, we've got Rutter. A full French team. But what does the game actually think? Filter by the best 11, this is the team. So the actual team is going to be Donnarumma, Hakimi, Salabia, Upacano, Hernandez, Yagate remains in the team. I couldn't get rid of him. Camavinga, Turam, Komen, Dembele, Rutter. So to be fair, we're only going to have what? Okay, unless I'm being blind. One, two, 
three players that aren't French now in that starting 11. We've got a lot of French players on the bench. We've got Tell, we've got Kembembe, we have got the likes of Hernandez, we've got Mukalele, we've got Adley, we've got Soppy, we've got Emery. In fact, we're going to make sure these do actually get on the bench because I do want them to pick up some game time. So we have sort of already done part of the rebuild, but we've still got a lot of trophies to win. Let's crack on to that third season. So the third season, guys, it's just as dominant in the French League, picking up 88 points compared to Monaco. Every season, there's been a second place that is a completely different team, which is quite good to see, but no one has managed to knock us off our perch, which is even better. The two losses we picked up are going to be against Lille and Nice in a 2-1 and a 1-0 defeat, so a very close couple of games there. But in terms of the league table, not close close at all. Rutter instantly comes in and picks up 31 goals, which is tied with Wahey. Now, how does that get decided? Please let me know in the comments, guys. How do they decide who gets ranked one out of them two? Please let me know. In terms of the rating, it's going to be treble PSG players. Turam, Hernandez and Dembele, the trio of French players, we'd love to see it. Assist is going to be Dembele coming in in second place with 13. Donnarumma, again, another player we simply can't offload, coming in with 26 clean sheets. And Rutter coming in in third place with six player of the matches. So a very good season for the entire team. The Coupe de France, we also managed to win that in a 4-1 win over Lyon, a very convincing performance. And come on then, we'll also win the Trophy de Champion against Lyon as well. I feel bad for him, they didn't even win one trophy, but do you know what? We've got to take it, a comfortable 1-0 win. We also won the Champions League final with this absolute masterpiece set piece from Komen to Kamavinga, 1-0 up inside of 20 minutes. Manchester United completely crumbled after that as we get the second goal inside of the 57th minute. Kamavinga through to Dembele, over the top, through to the man Rutter. First time, what a finish, what a final. And it is actually going to be Rutter, guys, who really did impress me this season. I mean, 53 games played across all competitions. In fact, we'll break it down by competitions. 15 games in the Champions League, scored 12 goals and picked up two assists. French League, 32 games played, scored 31 and picked up three assists. This guy picking up a total of 48 goals in his first season. What a way to introduce yourself to French League football. Turam turned into some absolute animal by the looks of it, considering he's a midfield player. I know the most attacking, but he picked up 25 goals and 10 assists alongside of a 7.57 average match rating in the season. What a sign and he turned out to be. Matty's tail clearly took a little bit of a backseat this season, though I wasn't planning on doing that to him. I didn't want Rutter to replace him, but obviously when Rutter's on fire, you literally can't just drop in for the likes of Tell. But he is still played a very big part in this rebuild so far. And you know what? Definitely one for the future. But guys, that is going to be pretty much where this comes to an end because we have won literally every trophy. We can't top it. And that is going to be the challenge you set me to be completed. We have successfully rebuilt PSG with majority of French players and you know what it was a ton of fun and I really do encourage you guys to leave a comment below on any challenge rebuild you want to see me do because I'm going to put all of them in a community poll and whatever one wins I will 100% do if you have enjoyed today's challenge rebuild please do leave a like drop a little subscription below and I'll see you in the next video enjoy the rest of your day